The person you do want to hear from is Mr. Alvin Jung. He is the co-founder and CEO for the company called Handy Rehab, uh, which is part of the, can I call it the Zunosaki Project? Sure, I just did. Fantastic. This man is an unlikely entrepreneur. You go have a look at his background. He worked with uh, Cathay Pacific for a short time uh, while he was going to school. Then they liked him so much, they put him over to John Spire, of course, the owner of Cathay Pacific. Um, did some very high-level intellectual work at the Harvard Asian and International Project. And you're like, How, what in all that says that he is going to start up a health technology company? Nothing, but he's doing a great job, and that was why we invited him to come up here and talk about their technology. Some of you got to experience it outside, but he's going to come and give us the lowdown. So please welcome Alvin Chung, Andy Rehab. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Alvin Chung, the co-founder and CEO of Super Zach Robinson. Uh, our brand is called Hand to Rehab. So what we try and talk about, uh, Zunosaki is a Hong Kong based uh, robotic and social venture. We try to make uh, affordable robotics for rehab patients. And we're trying to do that and also improve the quality of living of the disabled and elderly in Hong Kong. So in simple words, uh, we make cool robotics stuff. Right? So um, this is our first uh, flagship product. Um, it's a robotic skeleton that helps show patients to regain uh, regain independence and motivations to have a rehab of it. Uh, what it is, is a wireless robotic loop that helps them to move their fingers again and also help them complete daily tasks that they couldn't do otherwise because of the stroke. Or other uh, brain injuries like stroke, uh, like uh, spinal cord injuries or traumatic brain injuries. So this is one of the features we had uh, back in December last year. Uh, of one of the patients and uh, uh, training in uh, one of our, our partner uh, clinics in Hong Kong right now. So uh, I'm not going to bore you with what's the theory behind that. Uh, maybe now you want to see the product first, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So can I have Jeffrey on stage to help me do a little quick demo, please? A uh, little hands of applause to Jeffrey. <laughs> Um, so uh, I will have you to put on this robotic glove, please, on the right hand. Yes. So you can see that everything is uh, portable, it's wireless, and it looks uh, pretty cool, I think. I yes. hope. Yeah, pretty cool, right? Yeah, so we're trying to make a robotic uh, for rehab patients uh, fun and motivating, not like other products in the market, which is metallic, which is cold, and which is heavy. And by doing this, uh, we can make it uh, very wireless, portable, and so that these products can actually go into every community and also households in the future, right? Um, can you help me? Yes. Cool. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. So, the robotic goes that does actually a uh, couple of few, few things for short patients, one of which is helping them to do some passive movements. So, yeah, say like close their hands or like open their hands for some small <laughs> Yeah, But what this means is that we can actually have them to grab holes on some real life objects, like a cup. Right. And Jeffrey now cannot open his hand and can drop a cup, right? <laughs> and the most interesting about it is that I was going to drop right? <laughs> So, the most interesting about this is that we add on a service EMG sensor. Is a muscle sensors that goes on the arm of the stroke patients. So for demonstration purpose, I'll put it on my arm first. So it's a slip-on design, so uh, very easily put it on. And what happens, what it does is that it detects the muscle movement of my arm. So uh, in real life, we put it on the stroke patient's arm, and so that it detects the muscle, micro muscle, of the muscle movement their robots. Right. And what it does is that it picks up these signals and then help them to do tasks they want to do but they couldn't do because of the stroke. Say, uh, for example, Jeffrey would close his hand, but he got a stroke. He couldn't do that, right? Uh, but I, we have these sensors that goes on his arm. I can help them do it, right? So just try to grab holes on something. It will trigger them the body build and have them do it. For example, and also, uh, you can see the uh, range of movements of mine. Uh, because a lot of stroke patients, they usually they have very uh, limited range of movement because they cannot control the muscles as a normal person does. So they can do like a very small range of movements like this. Right. See that, right? 
So I actually just moved my fingers a little bit, but then we can pick up this momentum movement and then use robotic will to have these rotations to do the whole range of movements. What it means, it means two things, right? Uh, one thing is that the movement is the intention driven by patients. So when it only triggers it when it only triggers the robotic will to move when the patients want to move a little bit, right? So actually how to have to motivate them to move their fingers more and have to motivate them to train their muscles more, right? And the second thing is that it's on neural rehabilitation level is that because we can do that, uh, we can do um, when they use a small range, they can have them do the whole range. So it actually helps them to strengthen their neural habitation connections between the brain and the muscles of the hands. Uh, so it helps them to uh, improve their rehabilitation uh, quicker, faster, in a more effective manner. And another thing that we find very interesting is that uh, when we help them to do the finger movement, say grab holes on the top, right now. So, uh, say we have them that holds on some real life objects right now. And on a, a motivation level, uh, a lot of, we observe that a lot of patients, because we have them do that, they want to move more of their arms. They want to move their elbow, or they want to move their shoulders. Because we have them to do the most difficult part of fingers, right? Because fingers is the most, it's the most difficult part of rehabilitation because there are a lot of like fine uh, movements, a lot of it's very complicated jobs as well. So we have to do the most difficult part, and they are motivated to do more uh, moving the uh, elbows and shoulders as well. So this product actually uh, not just helps them to improve fingers' uh, motions, but also other parts of their hands. So thanks, Jeffrey. I'll open your number, so. <laughs> and uh, so this is the new rehabilitations uh, theory we work we went through a little bit before. Uh, usually when we try to do emotions right now, uh, our brain will send a signal to their muscle groups and then our muscle groups will do the exact same things that our brain instructed to do. Uh, because we don't have any uh, damage in our brain cells or any injuries. So we can do the uh, task movement do very easily. For stroke patients, that is connection. That's, uh, they have a lot of uh, damaged brain cells because of strokes. So uh, they cannot control their arms and they cannot control the muscles. Uh, if we intercept them in the middle, uh, put a sensor on it, uh, extract the intention of movement, we can have them to do the whole task. So that the neural rehabilitation uh, cycle is complete, uh, the sensory nerves can send a better and clearer signals back to the brain, and which helps them to uh, control the muscles. Uh, and our project starts actually in like almost 10 years ago, uh, but our company is founded four years ago. Back in university, we have been testing with a lot of stroke patients on Hong Kong as well. Uh, we have published a lot of pa papers from uh, in, in the uh, Hong Kong Poly U. Um, this is one of the stroke cases that we have uh, worked with back in Poly U using first generations of robotic work. You can see that he has an impaired left hand. He couldn't control his hand and move uh, perfectly because of the strokes. After 10 sessions of trainings, you can see that his left hand has improved a lot. So each session is only about 40, 25 minutes, uh, and it's uh, each session we train him uh, two to three times every week, so quite intensive. And after only 20 sessions, you can see that the improvement is very visible. Uh, a lot of improvement, and he recovered about over 90 percent already in just 20 sessions. Um, there are about, about 200 patients on the project I've worked before with. And we see that over 70% of the patients have improved their head functions by 50% or more. Um, These patients are, are not only like acute cases which have the strokes, say, like two weeks ago, two months ago. We also work with patients that have um, been suffering from stroke for over 10 plus years already. And we still see improvement on these patients. So we want to see this project, see this impact, bring it to the communities, not just hospitals. Uh, also, like, we want to bring this impact to our new homes, community centers, and eventually households. That's why we started this project four years ago. Uh, we're in the middle of uh, commercializing this technology, uh, manufacturing our best product, and hopefully that you can see Mark in July this year. 
and a launch of product in a couple of months of data. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Time for a couple of questions. If people want to ask you uh, about the technology, I have to admit, when I first heard about it, I thought it was just for people actually just getting around and using it. I didn't realize that it had a rehabilitative function. Um, but if, does anybody out there have a question they'd like to ask before we go to our next speaker uh, about the investment? Yes, please. Uh, this, uh, this user headline, if I other than the stroke, I mean, just working other conditions, something like uh, say Parkinsonism or something like that? Uh, so just just for people that might not have heard it uh, for the Facebook Live, uh, could it work for other diseases like Parkinson and other? Sure. Uh, for Parkinson, they are like stabilizing purpose, but uh, we cannot do that exactly right now. Uh, but we also work. We can. Uh, we there are a lot of uh, physicians in the market. They want to test it on uh, spinal cord injury patients, also like traumatic brain injury patients that have uh, certain kind of brain injuries because of uh, any accidents like a car crash. So they cannot control the whole plants or uh, anything below their, their neck. And, uh, it actually helps them. It actually works for the patients. So you will be eventually targeting other limbs also, like lower limbs? Could you do? Could you work with other limbs as well? It's something other than the hand? Could it work for other parts of the body? Oh, definitely. That's the, that's the goal of our company. That's the strategy. We want to be, uh, we can do Iron Man tech or we have the patients. <laughs> Very good. How big do you think the market is for this? Wow, it, it is huge. I think it's over uh, 1.3 billion uh, US dollars right now. And it's, but uh, the growth rate is very fast. It's growing by about 30% uh, annually. So uh, it's expanding a lot because of the robotic technologies. It's, it's, it's really new, actually. It's, it has worked with a lot of like, motors, uh, motor technologies, and also sensor technologies. So we can see that the, the, uh, the industry is picking up. Very good. Uh, question over here? Okay, so if you want to make it affordable, um, what are the aspects that are allowing you to make it for less money than competition? Okay, so the question is about how do we make it affordable? How do we bring down the price uh, so it's affordable for more people? Um, so, I mean, if you uh, grab hold of this product, it's actually made of uh, plastics, mostly, right? So the manufacturing cost is not that big. Uh, I think to make it affordable is goes into the visions and the reason why we found this company, right? Uh, we can, I mean, we are charging about one third to one fourth price of our competitors in the last Um So um, why we do that? Because we see that, uh, we think that we can make a balance between financial stability and also make an impact to the patients. Um, my partner, uh, who's, a, who's also the founder of the company, uh, we want to see this product out there lots of people using it. Uh, we have 25,000 people suffering from strokes every year just in Hong Kong. There are about 300,000 strokes of divers uh, living among us. We don't see that. Why? Because most of them are living in like healthy homes and also like we have centers. One of my uncles has been living in there for 40 years already. Um, so we'll see, but uh, a lot of these healthy homes are using technologies that has been around for the past 20 years. Well, one fun story is that one of my uh, sales managers went in and then they saw the device, they sold them in 2001. Right? So it's very undeveloped market. So uh, I mean, how to make it affordable is that we find a way to be, uh, balance, take a balance between financial sustainability and making impacts to uh, the community and patients that we Okay, whatever it costs in Hong Kong, I'm sure it will cost 10 times as much in the United States you know, based on how they run their healthcare. All right, ladies and gentlemen, big thank you to Alvin Jung for coming in. Thank you. Thank you.